What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and InScape tutorial for you. So if you remember in the last video I did about InScape, I talked a little bit about the new features in version 2.9. Well in today's video I wanted to get a little more in depth on the new Asset Manager function because I think this is really kind of a big deal for InScape and I wanted to talk you through how to use it, how to import models that aren't SketchUp models, other things like that. So I will link to my video about InScape. 2.9 if you want to see all of the new features that were in there but for now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the asset importer so let's go ahead and just jump into it all right so one of the biggest things that can make a difference in your renderings looking realistic is if you use high quality assets inside of your renderings SketchUp's great for a lot of things but inside of the 3d warehouse you can get so much variation in quality that a lot of the time what you actually bring in just doesn't look very good the materials aren't high resolution the geometry isn't high quality. I mean, things like this lamp right here, I mean, they look great for being inside of a SketchUp model, but when you render them, they just don't really look very good. So InScape, in their new version, added the ability to manage a custom asset library within InScape. And so there's a lot of different reasons that this is a great feature. So the very first is, I mean, obviously InScape already had their online asset library, right, with all of their assets that they could download. But a lot of the time, you need something that's outside of that's outside of their library and so what they did is they added this function over here for custom assets and you can see I have a couple assets in here but let's go ahead and add some more what this does is this allows us to create our own custom renderable model library inside of SketchUp and so the cool thing about this is this isn't even really built around like SketchUp files right so let's create a new asset so if I click on this create new asset right here what it's gonna do is it's gonna pop up this little window right here this window is built to help us set up our models and so I've got this model that I downloaded from Quixel from Megascans and so if you look at it if you've ever downloaded models from other programs a lot of the time what you get kind of looks like this right so you've got like these kind of like weird maps in here and these different geometries and other things that if you bring in um, with like a standard SketchUp file first they might First, they might crash SketchUp because they have so much geometry in them, but then also the materials don't come in right. It's just kind of a mess, right, when you're bringing them into SketchUp. Well, what InScape has done is they've built their asset editor in a way that's supposed to help you import all of this stuff and get it set up right. And so what we want to do is I've got this preview model and it's a part of Quixel's uh, modular building stuff which I may play around with more in the future it's really kind of fun but if you look at it basically it's a model and it's a modular part of a building and so it's got um, like a door and stone and other things like that well what I want to do is I want to bring that into Enscape so the way that you do that is let's go ahead and let's call this modular building dash And so what we need to do is we can just kind of follow the instructions in here. So the first thing it's asking for is a source model. So in order to do that, we need to import a file. So to import our file, we just want to go up to the import geometry function. All right, so now we want to go to the folder where those files were downloaded and we want to find the mesh that we want to bring in. Notice how these are brought in with different levels of detail. So LOD5 has the lowest detail, so it has the smallest file size. This one has the highest detail, so it has the largest file size. In this case, I want to bring this in. And notice how this is allowing me to bring in these FBX files. I'm not 100% sure what all of the files that you can bring in are, but I'm pretty sure you can do like FBX, OBJ, um, some of the standard files. So in this case, I'm going to bring in this FBX file. All right, so now we've got our G geometry in but let's take a look at a couple things so first thing is it's way too big right so when we bring it in notice our scaling is all kind of messed up um, so the the whole thing on the Z axis it's 238 meters which is obviously too big I'm not a hundred percent sure what the height on this thing is um, maybe like Maybe we'll set this to a height of like four meters or something like that so I'm just gonna adjust this to four notice how now I'm way away from this inside of my 3D view. Well, all we need to do to fix that is just double click in here. So when we double click, notice how that allows us to zoom in really quickly. So the next thing you might notice is as of right now, there's no textures applied to this. So we need to set up our textures over here in our materials section. So to do that, 
we just need to use these little plus buttons in order to load in the things that we need. So to start off, we want to load the albedo. The albedo is where the color information for your models is stored. So all we have to do is click the plus button. And so we just want to go find the map labeled albedo. And so when we do that, notice how now we get our albedo material in here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add a little bit more geometric detail, right? Like this looks good, but we want it to have a little bit of a bumpiness or a normal map applied to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the button right here for texture. We're going to click on the plus and we want to go find the normal map. Notice how this will allow us to load a displacement map, a normal map, or a roughness map. So I actually tested this, and for this one, it actually looks best with the normal map. So the displacement gets a little bit weird. I'm not sure if that's a mega scans thing or what that is. But notice how when I load this in, I want to find the normal, and I want to click the drop down to make sure this is set to be a normal map. Well, notice how now I'm getting much more realistic shadow information on this object, right? Like it looks pretty good. And then we want to make sure that we load in the roughness map down below. So that roughness map is going to allow us to set how light reflects off of our object, right? So now we've got our object pretty much set up. We just want to save this inside of our library. So the first thing we need to do is we need to rotate to a location that we like, maybe something like this, and then we need to save a thumbnail. So to do that, we just want to click on this button right here and it'll take a screenshot of your model object and it'll save that. And then you can save your project and you can click on the button to generate your asset. And so when you generate your asset, what that's going to do is that's going to take this asset and it's going to put it in your asset library. So now if we close out of this and we look in our library, you can see how our door is going to show up in here. So I'm just going to click on this and then bring it in. And so what you might notice, and this is really kind of interesting, is when you bring this into SketchUp, you'll notice that you just get this low poly preview when you use these Enscape assets, right? Like you just get a box in here. That's to keep SketchUp from slowing down by trying to display all of those triangles that were in there. However, if we were to render this, so if I was to click play on Enscape and then take a look at what it generates, it's going to load in all of that other information inside of our model. So, so if I bring this over, you're going to see that the full geometry is getting loaded in with reflections and shadows and everything else. So this is going to render out looking really good and really detailed, while at the same time not slowing down our SketchUp model. So this is a great way to manage those higher polygon assets. Obviously, I've still got a scale issue in here, so that's something that I'm going to need to fix to get it to a little bit um, more normal height. Um, I don't know why that is with external model programs, but it happens a lot when you bring them into SketchUp. But overall, you can see how this is a great process to start building up those like really detailed libraries for objects that you want to render that you don't have to mess around with in SketchUp trying to get your textures right and other things like that. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Are you going to be using this feature? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.